So I was talking to the Lord this morning and it was just so clear. It's time to wake up and smell the roses. Or the coffee, you know, if you want to smell coffee, whatever. But it's time to wake up, saints. It's way past time for the church to wake up. I think what grieves the Holy Spirit mostly is the lack of reverential fear of the Lord. Saints, do you realize that you're just going into church any old way you want to? You dress pretty much even the holiness people they dress they, their legs are showing their breasts are, are showing their butts are showing the men are you know wearing pants and shirts that are showing things that should not be showing and you go into a place of worship to worship it's not a dating hookup spot. It's not the place to come into the sanctuary and talk about what you ate for dinner last night and the movie that you seen last night. The sanctuary is supposed to be a sanctuary for the Lord and his people to meet. And when you come in like you want to come in, and you're just, oh, I'm so happy that the Lord is here and I feel his presence. Have you stopped to think that you grieve him because you're not reverentially fearing him? You are not honoring him. You are not glorifying him. You are not praying. You are not worshiping. You're literally in the sanctuary talking about stuff, talking about things, and a lot of times talking about people. It ought not to be this way, saints. It's time to wake up. It is time to wake up out of our stupor. The Lord himself said, this is my father's house. And it is to be a house of prayer. Wake up and smell the roses, saints. Wake up and smell the coffee. We're in trouble in the church. Okay? The building, the church. Because if you do your research, you're going to find out that it always was meant to be a building. The church. I don't care what they put in the concordance. If you do a little research, you're going to find out it was always meant to be the building so that people would come to the building. And that's the only place that you can find God is in that building. That's the only place you feel the presence of God is in that building. We need to wake up. The presence of the Most High God lives in you. The Holy Spirit quickened you, brought you to life. Therefore, you're supposed to be living a separated life unto him. A holy life, not a life like the world, not a life that looks like the world. I'll just ask you a real simple question, saints. If the Lord came and visited your house and acted the way that you act in his house, worship to an audience of one. We are not there to see what somebody wore to church. We're not there to gossip. We're not there to catch up on the weather. We are not there to plan what we're going to sing next. We're not there to talk shop, whether it's church shop, ministry shop, or professional shop. We come in any old way we want to because of that song. 
just as I am without one plea. And let me tell you what, saints, that's, what, that's not what that means. The Lord will accept you and save you wherever you're at when you call out to Him. But let me tell you, when you really make that decision for Him and you decide to follow Him, then you are the one that is required to study the Word of God, which is Jesus, the living Word. Get to know the Lord. Get to know His ways. Get to know His desires. Get to know His heart. Get to know His commandments. And I don't care how many people tell you that the Old Testament and most of the New Testament is not for today. They are heretics. The Word of God is from Genesis all the way to Revelation and everything in between. I'm sure the Lord God Almighty Himself is the one that decided what He wanted in there and what He didn't. And men do not have the final say. They just think they do. Get in the Word for yourself. Know the author and the finisher of your faith. And stop going into the sanctuary like you're going into a honky-tonk, a nightclub, or it's a party. Okay, that's what the fellowship hall is for. So why don't you go fellowship in the fellowship hall and come into the sanctuary to worship, to pray, and to adore the one that you're going to visit. And that's probably the problem with most people. They're going there to visit because he ain't inhabiting them to start with. The word says that the Lord will inhabit the praises of his people. The people are not praising the Lord. They're sitting there. They're standing there. They're sitting and standing. Um, it ain't about praise and worship. And you're going to say, oh, you're judging people. No, I'm not judging people. I'm judging fruit. There's a difference between judging a human being and judging the fruit that's coming out of them. Oh, by the way, if you would invite the Lord to your house just spontaneously, without time to clean up the porn and the X-rated movies and the R-rated movies, just say the alcohol, the drugs, the prescription drugs. Yeah, you know them prescription drugs that you think are legal, that are poisoning you just as bad as the rest of the stuff. What would he find in our homes? Yeah. Oh, you want to know what he'd find in my house? you look. I don't have no problem with that. Even the stuff that's packed in storage. You ain't gonna find nothing that's gonna bring a reproach to my father's name. Been there, done that. Got the t-shirt. Put it on. Wore it. Wore it out. Got another one. Saints, the more trash you bring into your life, Oh, yeah, don't, not to mention the computer and what, what you've been looking at on there. Uh-huh. Yeah, people don't want to hear that. Well, I'll just go to church and, and you're judging me and the Lord knows my heart. He sure does. Boy, does he. Woo! Lord, you know my heart. Lord, you know, I don't want to hear, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for I knew you not. Saints. You can say I'm harsh. You can say whatever you want to. You can jump up and down. You can snort and blow and do whatever it is you want to do. You can hyperventilate. You can point a finger and say, oh, that sister with a testimony. Da, 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 da. You gossiping anyhow. Yeah. See, you got to be careful what you say about people because it'll get back to them. Yeah. You be talking about folk. Somebody will tell on you. 
the Bible says a little birdie's liable to hear it and go tell it. So you know what, saints? If you're talking about me, you're going to leave some, some other poor person alone that can't handle it. Because I can guarantee I can handle it. So wake up. The Lord said, wake up. It's time. Wake up. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, wake up. To God be the glory. Get out of your stupor. Turn your back on sin once and for all. And you ain't got to go back to it like a dog going back to his vomit. You ever seen a dog puke and then lick it up? That's the same thing. That's what it's talking about. Or a hog go waller in the mud. The Bible says that a leopard can't change its spots. The only one that can change me is the Lord himself. But I gotta want to change, saints. You gotta want to change. And if you're saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and living saved, and you are, you know, you ain't sinning, you ain't even got no bad thoughts coming in, and you've learned how to cast down vain imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God, and you can take every thought captive into the obedience of Christ Jesus, having in you a readiness to revenge your disobedience until your obedience is fulfilled. Hot dog, hallelujah, start praying for somebody, and get up off your pew and your comfort zone, and go do something for the kingdom of God. And that don't mean going to church and paying your tithes and supporting the preacher. That means get up and go do something for the kingdom of God. You going to church, that's that's required. You going to the building, you know, to fellowship, to the audience of one, with your brothers and sisters. You ain't doing God no favor. You ain't doing yourself a favor. Because that's all you do. But you're a good churchgoer. So hopefully you'll make it. I'm just saying, saints. If you're going to preach it, live it. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to Joy, my King, in what you hear, may it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. I love you, Lord. God bless you, saints. I love you. I really do love you. I wouldn't be telling you this if I didn't love you because you are not going to make heaven if you're actively following after sin and you ain't doing nothing to change your lifestyle but you're claiming the name of Jesus God bless you assist you with a testimony hey don't be offended if you are God bless you I love you I forgive you if um, you know if you're gossiping whatever you're doing hey that's between you and the Lord right whatever yeah I know bless us Lord bless us Lord bless us Lord we need you Lord we need you Lord no I'm being sarcastic now saints this is the deal we need to get past being needy folk okay we need to get past being needy and we need to go meet some needs instead of sucking up all the blessings okay we've been blessed with every spiritual blessing so therefore it's time, saints, to go be a blessing. Sister with a testimony, just saying. <laughs>